Okay, good morning. Tuesday 3rd of July. We're out and about now in Cashan. Got uh, three or four attractions to see today, some historical houses and historical hammams. Okay, this is Tabata B historical house. Built by a famous carpet merchant. windows they come at the right time of the year here it's an amazing effect here this is where the animals were kept here this is actually on a higher level or the same level as the, as the town's ground floor where the house is at the lower level this is to keep the smells from the, the animals from coming into the house where the animals would enter it's at the same level as the street and through the door there they'll be kept here and in the room we were just in there You can see the difference in height. And the house is at a much lower level. This keeps the smells from the animals from, from uh, getting into the living area. And also the house is at a lower level because of the heat and also so the water would run through here. Straight through the courtyard here. European style. You can see the arches here. These are European Roman style uh, arches. Also a peacock on the wall here. Amazing details everywhere. This actually here's a decoration of the crown from the English Queen. So this room down here, this is how you make a cool room. Without wasting energy, it's uh, built at the lower level. And then the soil around it will insulate it and then there's channels here. The water you saw up in the pools up there, they would flow behind the channels here. And also there's a wind tower that uh, creates a natural air circulation and cools the, cools the room. You can feel it's extremely cool down here. Amazing way of creating a natural free air conditioner. Very steep steps. The reason for that is it saves space. One of the reasons for building this house at a low level was to get water to flow through it. You can see here, these are water channels. And these channels they lead to a long underground water source in the nearby villages. So then they're guided through these channels here, out to feed the pools in the courtyard. And then the same water would also be used for cleaning and washing and drinking. And that water ingeniously would be used to cool down the lower building down there, as we saw in the room there with the uh, lower air-conditioned room with the water channels at each side. Pretty clever. We've also seen pictures in the winter time, it also gets cold here, believe it or not. It's actually snow. Um, so that's why they use one part of the house in the winter and one part in the summer. So in the winter it does actually get cold here. Even though it's a little bit hard to believe today when we're here when it's 40 degrees. Time to see another house. It's actually called Love House. Why is it called that? It's because the merchant that we uh, that we just saw that built the house uh, we've just been in, he had a daughter. And there was a boy in the town that wanted to marry her, and their father says you can, but under one condition, you build a house just like mine. And that's what he built here. So let's go and have a look at this. Some people say this is even better than the father's house. Again, this house has a winter part and a summer part. This is the winter room. You can see there's even a fireplace. Okay, now we're in the summer part of the house. One of the main elements here, you see there's a huge wind catcher, as they call them, in the roof and different holes in the roof. This acts as a cooling tower, cool down the room. I actually feel it is quite cool here. Extremely beautifully decorated, but uh, 
a lot of European elements and that's because the king up there he went to Europe and traveled and when he came back he uh, inspired a lot of the artists um, of the time and architects that's why both the father's house and uh, this house here has a lot of European elements I can show you a few of them here you can see here the bridge there this is a European bridge all the scenes that are painted here, they're from Europe. I guess we say Holland here. And also here, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It also used to be a carpet. In Persia, they have, they love their carpets, as we've seen. And, uh, used to be a carpet here. But also the roof would be a mirror image of the carpet, so the carpet would have looked like, like this. historical hammam, a bath. So, uh, we'll have a look at this. It's the same kind of uh, entrance we've seen many places. Caravan Sarai we've seen different places now. Okay, we start on the rooftop here. You can see uh, previously these are uh, glass here. This was made of a special glass where light could penetrate but not uh, people couldn't look through. It was looking down at people taking a bath below. <laughs> View from up here. You can see the roof of the house we've just been in over there, with the wind tower and wind catcher on the top. We're inside of the uh, mum here. This is the warm and uh, wet room. And they would make a fire outside and heat the water, and mix it with cooler water to get the right temperature. Time to go in our carriage again go and have some lunch. Okay, they're entering a Persian garden. So this is a Persian garden and Persian gardens the characteristics are that they have water flowing, natural water flowing through the garden. These uh, fountains here, they are all natural as well, just produced by the natural slope of the water. Also surrounded by high walls. And the Persian garden will always have a pavilion in the middle, that's where people can sleep and stay there. A man called Ami Kabir. He was a former, actually a former prime minister, and he started his life as a cook. But he was so wise and intelligent, he actually rose to the ranks of prime minister. And he did some important things for Iran. He actually um, removed the tax that people had to pay to the king at that time, and uh, other reforms that were the people of Iran were extremely grateful for. But uh, the acts that he made actually led to his uh, downfall because. Uh, when the king was drunk, he ordered the assassination of uh, Amir Kabir. And that was actually in this uh, hammam behind me where he was killed. Um, down there in one of the uh, chambers. So, uh, yeah. It's a beautiful garden, but also has a sad history. Source of the of the water here, the natural spring. It comes up in the hole there. It's believed if you throw a coin in, if the coin actually goes in the hole, the wish comes through. But Jamie's trying to get now. I think he's tried about five times now and got one in. So one of his wishes will come true. <laughs> Maybe that one as well. <laughs> this is where the water comes up and it runs in these channels here into the rest of the the garden. covered in uh, golden tiles they have been stolen when the, the transition between one dynasty to the next king occurred and then the, 
because of a lack of security at that time, then the tiles were stolen. Sat here and had an ice cream. This is a great place to relax and just sit here and feel the warmth and relax a little bit. Nice ice cream, a little saffron ice cream with chocolate. It's really good. Okay, you may be wondering what are the people like in Iran? But uh, so far, I can tell you they're extremely well mannered, um, polite, and, uh, extremely courteous as well, very friendly. So, of course, we're a bit. Uh, isolated when we have a guide that he does a lot of the communication with people we meet in restaurants and, uh, and buying things but uh, the people that we encounter so far are extremely friendly and uh, just like we saw in Turkey it's the same kind of uh, warmth you see in their faces and uh, they seem quite eager to talk to us and uh, quite a few ask if we could be friends on uh, or WhatsApp because they don't have uh, Facebook here but, uh, yeah, so far, Iranian people are very, very well mannered and polite. We're going to a traditional Iranian restaurant today. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, wow. Okay, here we're in the restaurant here. <laughs> Danish flag and the Iranian flag. Very good, very good. <laughs> Doing okay over there? Yes. I'm uh, comfortable. I'm trying some different food and sit like this. Very cozy. Torben doing okay there? Very comfortable. Very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, and Jamie Allen. What are you doing? Jamie's asleep. <laughs> on the table. <laughs> on the table. No. Okay, now the tablecloth is coming. <laughs> That's where the food will be. Here the carpets are getting, or well, the tablecloth is getting full of food. <laughs> and this is the pure lamb meat, pure. We need a bigger table. <laughs> okay, wow. the end of our day here in Kashin, or well, one and a half days here in Kashin. It's been a really interesting place. It's a very traditional conservative town. Um, not a big town, quite a small town, but here in the desert so it's quite hot. It's a really interesting place as we've been the last few days, so I enjoyed that. Uh, today we had a good dinner in a traditional Persian restaurant, so it's good we got a chance to experience that again as well. We've tried that a few times in Turkey now, so that was great. But uh, tomorrow, yeah, that's uh, going to be another good day. We're off to Isafa. That's going to be the highlight of our time here in Iran. So I uh, look forward to going there tomorrow. So it'll take about two or three hours to get there in the morning and may even be able to see something in the afternoon. So, okay, we'll uh, see you tomorrow. The interesting thing is the number plates here, written in Farsi. <laughs> and the number plate we normally see. Okay, let's go in. 